Welcome to the Imaging Wire show. My name is Brian Casey and I'm managing editor of the Imaging Wire. We've got a great episode for you today. Our topic is AI for mammography and our guest is Dr. Christina Long, Associate Professor in Radiology Diagnostics at Lund University in Sweden. Dr. Long is also Principal Investigator at Lund University Cancer Center and she was the Principal Investigator on the landmark Maasai trial on the use of AI for uh, mammography. And we'll be talking about that trial today. Dr. Long, thanks for being with us today. Thanks. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and about some of your research interests? So uh, I uh, divide my time between clinical work as a breast radiologist uh, at the Skåne University Hospital in Malmö. And the rest of the time I'm committed to clinical research. And for the last couple of years, uh, the Maasai trial has been a huge part of my uh, research activities. Uh, but I'm also interested in, in other uh, novel ways to use AI uh, for point of care ultrasound. So those are my two main interests at the moment. Dr. Long, uh, mammography screening is performed a little bit differently in Europe than it is in the US. Can you talk a little bit about what some of the differences are? So the main difference uh, when it comes to uh, the European screening program compared to the US one is that we do double reading in Europe. And that means that each screen exams um, are read by two breast radiologists, uh, uh, typically in a blinded reading fashion. Uh, and the reason for this is to ensure a high uh, sensitivity. Perfect. And the interval is also a little bit different in Europe, isn't it? I mean, in the U.S., they, they encourage women to get screened every year. But in Europe, is it a little bit longer than that? Definitely. There are some differences uh, between the different countries in Europe. Uh, but the European uh, guidelines recommend to screen uh, with two year interval uh, between the age of 50 and 69. But in Sweden, we screen from 40 to 74. Uh, and the younger um, uh, population, they we screen with 18 months interval and the rest with 24 months interval. So there are some differences between the different countries in Europe. So now, Dr. Long, we're doing you're doing double reading in Europe. Does that create workload challenges? I mean, do you, do you need more radiologists to, to be reading these mammograms? Yeah, so that, that's uh, a big difference between the European and the US screening program. So in Europe, we are recommended to do double reading. And uh, I think that makes a lot of sense to do double reading because uh, it, it can really ensure that you can have a high sensitivity uh, in in the screen, in screen reading. Because typically in Europe, we have large screening centers so you read a large volume of screen exams and it's easy to miss subtle cancers uh, so it makes a lot of sense but the problem with this is that there's a huge lack of breast radiologists not only in sweden uh, but in many other countries uh, so i have we have several colleagues at my clinic that are uh, over 80 years old uh, that, that helps us uh, to uh, do our screen reading so uh, we hear the same from many other screening sites in Sweden and also uh, in other countries. So I think uh, to somehow relieve the um, the pressure from double reading uh, would be very good, but we need to do that in a safe way. And I think that AI could really help us out there to screening a screen in a more smart and efficient way. Now, when did you learn about AI for mammography and when did you start you know, getting intrigued by that? Uh, doing clinical research in breast imaging and especially in screening, it, it was quite hard to avoid being interested by AI because it's been such an interesting and uh, important topic. And we can early on see that this could have a huge uh, potential in, in screening. Uh, so we started quite early uh, uh, trying an AI algorithm in the clinic, and that was the Transpar algorithm by ScreenPoint uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, so we got an uh, early algorithm installed at the clinic, and that was, I think, around 2017. Uh, so we tried it out uh, during the clinical work. 
Uh, and we can also give some feedback to ScreenPoint, uh, uh, how, how they could improve the algorithm. Uh, but that was really interesting. And uh, uh, based on the um, uh, experiences that we got using this in the clinic, uh, we can then design uh, some retrospective studies. And the first study that we did um, was to see if we can use AI to identify normal exams. Uh, because that's one of the most important thing when it comes to screening uh, to to uh, identify the normal exam since the vast majority of women that attend screening do not have breast cancer. And um, the second study uh, that I wanted to uh, to get an answer on is whether AI can identify interval cancers at the time of screening. Uh, so these two retrospective studies uh, uh, both showed great potential uh, with AI being able to identify normal exams and reduce false negatives. Now, can you talk a little bit about uh, the Transpara software and, and how it exactly works in, in practice? So Transpara, uh, it um, analyzes a screen exam and then it can categorize uh, the exam on a risk score uh, between one and 10. And it's calibrated to yield approximately one tenth of screen exams in each risk uh, category. Uh, and this can then be used to, uh, uh, to triage screen exams or adapt the screen reading, which we did in the Maasai trial. And the second important part is that uh, Transpara can be used as a decision support where it provide CAD marks uh, highlighting suspicious findings. And the CAD marks, they are divided into uh, classification marks or soft tissue uh, CAD marks. So it, it sounds like historically, uh, you know, mammography screening had access to CAD, uh, computer-aided uh, detection. And that's what, you know, puts marks on the on the, the, the mammography image, the breast image. But, and, and it sounds like Transpara does that. But there's also this other function of analyzing mammograms and, and assigning ca categorizing them by risk yes. um so that's that's a really that's kind of a different approach yeah it's different and uh, uh, and this triage function is also very valuable in the screen reading especially uh, as i mentioned before if you have a really large screen uh, volume that you need to read you you have to be able to prioritize the high risk cases first because right now, you know, you've got all these cases coming in, the vast majority of them are normal, and but you've got to read each one as if it could have, have a cancer in there, right? I mean, you've got no way of knowing um, without Transpara, but what Transpara does is it enables you to kind of maybe focus on the ones that might be have the highest likelihood of cancer. Well, let, let's talk a little bit about the Maasai study because uh, that came out uh, earlier this year and it, it sounds like you did use the triage function of Transpaya for that. Can you talk a little bit about how that study was designed and, and apparently it's still underway? Yes, so the um, design behind the trial was to uh, use the triage function to identify high-risk exams. Uh, and we defined uh, those with Transpaya risk score 10 uh, as being high risk. And these cases underwent double reading. And all the remaining uh, screen exams uh, underwent single reading. Uh, and this was then compared to the double reading procedure where you did not have access to AI. And um, we also had access to the CAD marks at the screen reading. Uh, and we um, um, configured the uh, Transpara uh, so that the CAD marks were shown for cases uh, from risk group eight. So about 30% of all screen exams also had the availability of CAD marks. Um, but uh, yeah, and we um, I really thought uh, a long time how to integrate AI in the screen reading so that we can have an uh, optimal benefit of uh, humans and AI reading together and um, so the readers, the screen readers, they were aware that they read low risk exams or high risk exams. Uh, so, the, uh, so the rationale behind this is that we then can lower the false positives in the low risk exam and lower the false negatives in the high risk exam. So the readers were more 
put more attention to the images when it was a high risk exam. And also uh, the readers first read the image uh, with all the um, uh, perceptional advantages that humans have. They take in the whole image, like a holistic interpretation of the image. And just before they were ready, they put on the CAD marks to see if there are any subtle findings that they might have overlooked. And this combination worked really well. So the findings were published in, in Lancet Oncology uh, earlier, just a few months ago. What were some of the major findings of the Maasai trial? Yeah, it was uh, so exciting to um, to analyze the results. So I, I really didn't have any clue what to expect. And I was uh, really surprised that the results were so good because uh, using this uh, screen reading protocol with AI, we could detect more cancers. We det detected 20% more cancers without increasing false positives. And this is a, a huge uh, gain um, in the screen reading. And uh, at the same time, since we adapted single and double reading to the risk course, we could also reduce the number of screen readings for humans. And another important thing is that we uh, could reduce the screen reading workload for the radiologist. Uh, so it took uh, 36,000 fewer screen readings in the intervention arm compared to the con control arm. And that's a, a huge gain. So 44% reduction. That's enormous. So you're you're removing almost half of the workload from the breast radiologist uh, in terms of the number of of cases that they have to read. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. So and and at the same time, detect more cancers uh, without increasing false positives. So uh, I, I found the result quite uh, surprising and uh, uh, really good. Very promising uh, way to improve the screen screening protocol. Yeah, definitely. Now, how if if you applied this, this is a research study. If you applied this routinely in clinical practice, how do you think it would change uh, the work of breast radiologists in Europe? Yeah, there there's a lot of unknown there um, because we do not know what this uh, will mean for um, uh, breast radiology in the long run. How would you? Uh, 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 do if you only read the more difficult cases, you don't get the the reference of the um, of the normal exam. Uh, but that's uh, uh, well, the most evident thing is that this will definitely change um, the breast imaging field and also the screening field, and that's very much needed since there is such a lack of breast radiologists. And at the same time, the clinical work is getting more complex. We are adding uh, new types of imaging and new types of intervention, and we need more time for that. So then we can take time from the uh, relatively more simple screen reading task to the more complex clinical task. Mm, that's really exciting. Now, uh, we mentioned earlier that the, the Maasai trial actually is ongoing and you are continuing to acquire data, what are some of the things that you're going to um, to look for in follow-up studies? Yeah, so the, um, the trial, the uh, study population, it's uh, 100,000 women, and we have included all these, uh, uh, enrolled all these women um, in December uh, last year. Uh, so we're car currently analyzing uh, uh, screening performance measures on the full study population and uh, also doing uh, in-depth analysis of what type of cancers and stage of cancers uh, do we detect uh, with AI-supported screening compared to standard screening. So that will give a, a more insights in the clinical impact of using AI. Um, because there might be a difference in the, the type of cancers that uh, you detect with AI. And uh, the primary endpoint of the trial is uh, interval cancer rate. Uh, so that requires a two-year follow-up, which will be in the end of 2024. And the interval cancers are the ones that happen in between screening rounds. Definitely. And that's a, it's a good uh, surrogate measure of uh, screening efficacy uh, since... Uh, if you want to have a better screening program, it should um, uh, hopefully also reduce interval cancer. So it will be very interesting and exciting to see what the effect will be. 
Now, in addition to the Maasai trial, you were also involved in another research study that was published in Radiology in mid-October, um, and that used data from the, the Breast Screen Norway program. Can you talk a little bit about that study and, and, and how that was designed and what you found? So it was a um, study uh, used on an enriched uh, study population with about 1,600 uh, women. Uh, and the aim was to see how early uh, AI can detect cancers in screening. So we analyzed the um, prior screen exams to both screen detected cancer and interval cancers. And uh, uh, you can see that 39% of the interval cancers got a high risk score at the time of screening. And also 38% uh, of the screen detected cancers got a high risk on the prior screen exams. And also uh, got, um, uh, I think it was 26% that got a high risk score also four years prior to diagnosis. Uh, so we can see that the uh, Transpara algorithm has potential to detect cancer much earlier, but uh, this was a retrospective study, and but it corroborates the uh, results from the Maasai trial that we can increase uh, detection uh, with these algorithms. Now, these, you know, when you combine the Breast Queen Norway study and the Maasai trial, and then some other studies that that you weren't affiliated with, like Performs, there's been a lot of really exciting work going on in AI for mammography. What do you think needs to happen for us to get to the point where we we can just be using this routinely, like uh, you know, across Europe? Yeah, there are, are um, one important driver of this of the implementation of AI in screening, and that is the lack of breast radiologists. So they are AI is already being implemented in in some uh, screening um, uh, sites. For example, in the Copenhagen region, have been using Transpora for. I think maybe one and a half, two years now, um, due to the lack of breast radiologists. Uh, but when it comes to give a general recommendation, I think we should have more evidence um, um, before uh, we do that. And uh, what I'm interested in is to see the effect of interval cancers. And I also want to see that the results from the Maasai trial can be um, uh, reproduced in other uh, screening settings um, because it was limited by being a single uh, center study. And um, and also we propose one strategy to integrate AI in the screen reading pathway and there are other possibilities. I believe that our solution is, uh, is a good one since we have had uh, good results, but uh, it would be very good to see that uh, this can be done in other screening settings, settings and with other screening populations. All right, very good. Well, we'll uh, we'll look forward to seeing that. Um, Dr. Christina Long, Lund University, uh, thanks so much for being with us today. A really fascinating discussion. Thanks. Signing off for the Imaging Wire. My name is Brian Casey. <laughs>